Hey everybody, welcome to my video on the aggregate expenditures curve. Uh, we're going to start building our Keynesian cost model by building the AE line. But first, let's remember what GDP is. GDP is C plus I plus G plus net export. And that sounds like that should be what aggregate expenditures is. GDP is the value of all final goods and services purchased. Uh, but we're going to have a slightly different definition of the aggregate expenditures curve. Aggregate expenditures is C plus planned investment, IP is planned investment, plus G plus net exports. So the big difference is this I versus this I planned. And so let's get to it a little bit. I is equal to I planned plus I unplanned. So part of our investment we planned on and part of it we didn't. Planned investment is like regular capital building and expanding your business. And unplanned investment usually has to do with unintentional inventory changes. Where if you produce your product at a different rate than people are buying it. So let's return to this GDP. C plus I plus G plus net exports. AE is C plus I planned plus G plus net exports. If I is equal to I planned plus I unplanned... Well, then, when we look at these, in comparison, we see that your aggregate expenditure curve plus unplanned in inventory investment is equal to GDP. And that is the only difference between them. Now, we can mess with this a little bit. Uh, let's highlight that for now so we remember it's important. But I could rearrange it a little bit. GDP minus unplanned investment is equal to the aggregate expenditures curve. If aggregate expenditures equals GDP, then that means unplanned investment has to be zero. And that's our equilibrium. We'll come back to that in my next video. But that's equilibrium. Well, we're obviously not going to be in equilibrium all the time, so let's explore a little bit what happens if AE does not equal Y. So if aggregate expenditures are greater than Y, well then by our little equation up there, that means that inventory investment Sorry, unplanned inventory investment has to be negative. That means that there is an unintended decrease in inventory. Which, to put it in another way of saying it, is we are selling more stuff than we expected. And so our products are coming off the shelves faster than we thought. This is going to be important for us because later we're going to use this to help predict what part of the business cycle we're in. Now, what if aggregate expenditure is less than Y? Well, then unplanned inventory investment has to be positive. So we have positive, positive inventory investment, unintended increase in inventory. We're selling less stuff than expected. And so our equilibrium tells us the sweet spot and whether the IU is positive or negative also gives us some really interesting information. Now, what about the individual components of our curves? So AE is equal to C plus I plus G plus net exports. Well, I planned, but you get the idea. C, we have our consumption function, where C, y, C of Y is equal to some autonomous spending level plus your MPC times your GDP. That is a equation where depending on your value of Y, you'll get a different value. Everything else though, all of these other pieces are exogenous which means they're decided outside the model and they are just a constant value. So we hold them constant along the AE line. Now, if any of these things move, that moves the AE line. But as long as you're on the line, those are all constant. It's a lot like the idea of a supply curve or a demand curve. Uh, there are things that shift it. This is the same idea here. These are the shifters. So we could get into a little bit more detail on these. Uh, we have these shifters. What are the things that shift investment? Well, we can have expected future profitability, interest rate, taxes, and cash flow. I'll leave it to another video to have a greater discussion on all of these, but these can all affect how much investment we plan to, in to take. Uh, we can talk about the things that shift government spending. That one's a little bit simpler. Because government spending is just all your federal, state, and local spending. So if the government spends more, it's going to shift. If it spends less, it's going to shift. One note, though, is that transfer payments do not count. 
Those are not G. Now what about net exports? What can shift that? Well, these are all kind of variations on the same thing. It's all about trade, of course. But uh, the US price level relative to foreign prices, our growth in GDP relative to foreign GDP growth, and our exchange rate between the dollar and foreign currencies. Yeah, there's a lot here, and this video is already going to be long enough, so I don't want to get into all of these. But changes in any of these can move the net, can move the aggregate expenditures line. But any of these can change the aggregate expenditures line. Uh, that said, within each aggregate expenditures curve, all of those variables, all of them, are all held constant within each AE line. If any of those move, your whole line's going to have to move. So, let's get back to our main equation. There it is. C, that's your consumption function. All the others are all exogenous. What's this going to look like for us? Let's say our consumption function is 500 plus 0.8y. So we'll draw that there. We can give it the 500 and the slope of 0.8. And we have $200 of plan investment. So there's that. $100 of government spending, so there's that. Let's see, we have a trade deficit of $50, so there's that. And then the aggregate expenditures curve is equal to C plus I plus G plus net exports. Planned I, but same idea. So let's add C in there, 500 plus 0.8Y. Let's add plan investment in there, 200. Let's add government spending in there, 100. Let's add net exports in there, minus 50. Add those all up together and you get 750 plus 0.8y. And there is your aggregate expenditure function. Intercept 750, slope of 0.8. Aggregate expenditures and consumption will always be parallel in this model. Yeah, that's kind of how you build it. Let's talk just briefly about what happens if you have to shift it around a little bit. Uh, so we'll start with this line. And I'm just going to go over a couple of scenarios, like let's say that plan investment rises. Well, if it does, then your aggregate expenditures line is going to increase. There's a new one. Well, what if then net exports falls? Well, then your aggregate expenditures is going to fall. So it goes down, and then you're at a new one. And what if government spending rises? Well, if it does, your aggregate expenditures rises, and you wind up at a new one. Those things can all happen, and that's all fine. But yeah, I think that is a sufficient crash course for this aggregate expenditures curve. I hope it's helpful to you. In my next video, we will draw the full Keynesian cross diagram where we put a uh, 45 degree line in it and do some crazy stuff with equilibrium and unplanned inventory investment and the business cycle. But we'll get to that later. So thanks for watching, guys. Good luck and happy econing.